Our sermon today is taken from the Gospel reading of Matthew chapter 13. The 13th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, from which our Gospel is taken, is often called the parable chapter because in it, St. Matthew records seven of the parables Jesus told. Parables are often defined as earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. They are stories taken from everyday life told by Jesus to illustrate some spiritual truth. There are two parables that make up our message for this morning. Both parables speak of the great value that we ought to place on the kingdom in heaven. They compare the kingdom of heaven to a pearl of a great price and to a treasure hidden in a field. As we consider the pearl of great price, we shall see what it is, what makes it so valuable, and how it is found. Both parables speak of a treasure which ought to be worth more to us than anything else and everything else that we could possibly own. We are told what this treasure, this pearl of great price, is. It is the kingdom of heaven. While the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God, as it is usually called in the Bible, is not an earthly visible kingdom, The Bible leaves us no doubt about the nature of this kingdom. The Bible tells us that we are by nature born into the kingdom of the devil, the kingdom of darkness. That simply means that by nature, the devil controls our lives and our destinies, whether we know it or not. It means that he rules over us and will finally have us in hell forever. But through conversion, through being born again, through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, who was born to destroy the works of the devil, we come into the kingdom of God. In his letter to the Colossians, St. Paul says that God rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. Martin Luther sums up the teaching of the Bible when he says in the second article, that the Lord Jesus redeemed us who were lost and condemned creatures, that he purchased and won us from sin and from death and from the power of the devil with his holy, precious blood. With his innocent suffering and death, we will live with him in his kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is that kingdom in which God rules, in which God controls our lives and destinies, in which we, by faith, recognize and receive the true God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as our Lord and King. There is a great deal of confusion in the church of our time about the nature of the kingdom of God. Many modern theologians insist that the kingdom of God is a perfect social order in which there is no poverty, no conflict, no injustice of any kind. But Jesus said that his kingdom was not of this world. Moreover, he said that the kingdom of heaven was present while he was here on earth. And it is clear that there was no perfect social order in the Roman Empire. He told the people of his time that some of them would not die until they saw the kingdom come with power in a powerful way. Often, modern theologians say that Jesus was mistaken that he thought the perfect social order would come during the lifetime of his followers. If the kingdom is what the modern theologians say, then Jesus was wrong. But if the kingdom is what the Bible says it is, then Jesus is not wrong. The Bible says it is a kingdom not of this world, but a kingdom in which people receive the true God as their Lord and King by faith. For before the first apostles died, there were thousands of people, not only in Israel, but all over the world as it was known at that time, who had come to faith in the Lord Jesus and who, had, who received him as their king, as their Lord and their God. When we have a correct understanding of what the kingdom of God really is, then we will also know why it is properly described as a pearl of great price, as a treasure that is worth more than everything else 
we could possibly own. The man in our text who found the treasure hidden in the field went and sold all that he had in order to buy that field in which the treasure was hidden. The merchant in the second parable, who was selling fine pearls, also went and sold all that he had so that he might buy that one pearl. Jesus plainly teaches us that in the kingdom of heaven, we have a treasure for which we ought to be willing to give up everything else we own. This is a treasure which is worth more than all the rest of the world. He taught the same truth when he asked, what good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his soul? Martin Luther expressed his faith in the correctness of this evaluation when he wrote the hymn, A mighty fortress is our God, and they take our life, goods, fame, child, and wife. Let these all be gone. They yet have nothing won. The kingdom ours remaineth. If a person believes what the Bible says about heaven and hell, about life and death, about God and man, if he really believes that the person who is not born again cannot enter the kingdom of God, if he really believes that those who do not enter the kingdom of God by faith during their life in this world will spend an, in, will spend an endless eternity in unhappy torment, he will know that having the kingdom is worth more than anything this world could possibly give. What is it worth to you to know for sure that God loves you and that for Jesus' sake he will take you to heaven when you die? A perfect social order may give every man a good house to live in, but it will never give him a place in the mansions of our Heavenly Father. It may give a man a good life, but it, cannot, but it can never guarantee him a good death. Security from the cradle to grave is not worth security after the grave. And this is what we have in the kingdom of heaven. It is truly a pearl of great price. These verses also remind us of another truth about this treasure that we have a tendency to forget. Both men found their treasure while they were not looking for it. The one man was not looking for anything in particular, and the other was looking for other treasure. The kingdom of heaven is always found by people who are not looking for it. God says through the prophet Isaiah, I let myself be found by those who did not seek me. Like the merchant, many people are seeking something that will bring them satisfaction. They are seeking fine pearls. A native in Africa, for example, comes to a mission nurse looking for healing and finds and he learns about the Lord Jesus. A person joins a church because he feels that it is a respectable thing to do and he finds the Savior in the preaching of the gospel. A young man agrees to take a Bible information class because he wants to marry a Christian girl and he finds the way to heaven. Others just stumble upon it like a man who found the treasure hidden in the field. This is a truth which is tremendously important to us as we seek to carry out the obligations as members of a church which still thinks of itself as a mission church. And I hope that the time will never come when we will think of ourselves as anything else than a mission church, no matter how large this congregation becomes. We know what we have in the gospel. We know what it can mean to people to hear the good news of salvation proclaimed clearly Sunday after Sunday. We know what the forgiveness of sins and the hope of heaven in Christ are worth. We know that they are worth more than all the rest of the world. The world is not looking for what we have. And we are here not only for other Christians who are looking for a place where they can once again hear the gospel. We must also keep in mind those people in this community who don't know what a treasure we have to offer them. In other words, we ought not just wait for people to come to us. We need to go to them. Someone has said that a person finds the grace of God when the grace of God finds him. We ought to get into the habit of thinking ourselves and our work 
as channels through which the grace of God might find people, so that people might find the grace of God, the pearl of great price. May God grant it. Amen. Please stand as we recite 